Welcome everyone to Keeping the Faith. Uh, this is a recording of our first youth educational session that took place on September 29th, 2020. So it's basically educating us about different factors about COVID-19 and it's hosted by the FIU chapter of Student National Medical Association. Next for me, please. So Keeping the Faith is a program that um, focuses on making sure that everyone gets tested, getting those results, making sure we're educated about how to be protected when it comes to COVID-19 so that we can open up safely and get back to worshiping in our different religious institutions and just socializing in general. Um, this is a brief overview of what we covered in the session. First, we will do the introductions, then go over the 411 about COVID-19, the importance of testing, and at the end, we concluded with the Kahoot Challenge. Yeah, so who we are, like I said, these youth educational sessions are um, conducted by the FIU chapter of Student National Medical Association. I am Shanta Roll, the president of the FIU chapter. I am Akil Mills, I'm the vice president of uh, FIU SNMA. Hi everybody, my name is Gamaly Antonio and I'm the community service chair of the FIU chapter of SNMA. Yes, unfortunately, our treasurer, Jenny Knight, wasn't able to make it today, but she was at the first session. So SNMA is a national organization for medical students, and we focus on increasing the amount of underrepresented medical students who go on to become black and brown doctors. So our chapter at FIU was very happy to participate in this program and to volunteer with Keeping the Faith. So the Keeping the Faith program is funded by Health Foundation of South Florida. It's a partnership between 27 community churches, James Wilson Bridges Medical Society, Haitian American Faith-Based Network, Black Nurses Association of Miami, and Haitian American Nur Nurses Association, as well as SNMA, as I said. So this program aims to help us prevent the spread of coronavirus and allows us to reopen safely. We offer access to free testing, virtual educational sessions for youth and adults such as this, um, personal protection equipment and referral to healthcare services. There will be lots of learning, lots of testing and lots of prizes offered. So we have six virtual sessions. Um, on September 29th, we covered a test that doesn't affect your GPA. That's what this session is about. Um, our next session is on October 13th. My friend's dad calls mask face diapers. We're talking about the importance of wearing masks, how to wear them correctly, and the ways in which they allow us to protect ourselves and others. On October 27th, using social media for fun, health, and business. During this time of social distancing or physical distancing, you, we are able to use social media to socialize with our friends. Um, November 10th, overcome the haters and level up. That is referring to the health barriers and health inequities that exist and were, I would say, um, really exaggerated during this time, during this pandemic. November 17th, the sweet life focuses on diabetes and December 8th, our last session, how can I protect grandma? So we will be talking about other comorbidities such as hypertension. So what's in it for me or what's in it for you rather? So like I said, there are lots of prizes and it's based on, we have attendance prizes. So if you attend two out of our six sessions, you will receive bronze, um, four out of six is silver. And if you attend all six sessions, you are a gold member, if you will. And there are different prizes, the different levels have different prizes. Um, we also have in-session challenge prizes. So based on your participation, or if you're one of the top winners in, in games such as Kahoot, you also have the opportunity to win prizes. And then just the educational benefits. You get to come and learn about the myths and truths when it comes to coronavirus and COVID-19, and you get to pass that information on to your family and friends. So we... 
in the original session, we were able to try to get to know each other a little bit. We performed an icebreaker where everyone said what their superpower would be. And I'm just gonna ask the other two that are here with me to like just indulge and let's do this question again. If you had a superpower, what would it be? I guess I can get started. Um, if I had a superpower, I guess it would be to go back in time. Um, that way you could fix any mistakes or change things if you like. If I had a superpower, I think I would like to just be able to open my books up and read and just get all the information without having to actually study. So, <laughs> super studying, I don't know. <laughs> uh if i had a superpower it would be to travel time so like go back and forth like just any point in time yeah Next. all right so the 411 on COVID 19. i know COVID 19 has been the um in the news for the past seven months now and it's very um in the forefront of uh, the community as, as um, we try to maneuver. So it is important for us to understand what is COVID-19. And COVID-19, most importantly, is caused by the coronavirus. So um, it was originally um, in Wuhan, China in December 2019. There wasn't that much information on it. And, you know, unfortunately, as it spread, um, it started to gain attention and we started to be we started to become more aware of COVID-19. Uh, next slide. So how bad is it exactly? So right now um, there's a, more than 700,000 cases in Florida, which is actually a lot of cases and there's more than 7 million cases in the in the US and no one is immune from getting it. Everyone can get it. However, minorities are more likely to get COVID-19, more likely to be harshly affected by COVID-19. And the reason for this is because uh, minorities have comorbidities. So when I say comorbidities, I mean things like diabetes, hypertension, and because they have these com comorbidities, they're more harshly affected. But it's important to understand that everyone can get COVID-19 and there's no particular race or type or, you know, ethnicity that is affected or gets COVID-19 more than the other. Next slide. So how exactly does COVID-19 spread? Um, it can spread either by people or surfaces. So from people, it's person to person through small droplets. That's if it's anyone sneezes or if they cough without covering their mouth. And then the other person inhales uh, those droplets, those respiratory droplets. And Usually when people cough or they sneeze, these respiratory droplets can also get on the surfaces. And then if you come along and put your hand on the surface and then you touch your nose or your mouth, you, get, you put those respiratory droplets inside of your body and then you can become uh, infected with COVID-19. So it's, that's why it's so important to you know, wash your hands and to wear these protective masks. So this is just a nice little video that summarizes everything. So We don't have the sound. I think you might have to unshare and reshare with sound. and surprising his work pals with donuts. Problem is, tasty treats aren't the only thing he's about to share. <laughs> sure. Justin doesn't know it, but he picked up a germ at a concert last week. Now he's sprinkled his donut box, his hands, and the office door with those germs. 
in real time as Justin says good morning to John and Ashley grabs her favorite Boston cream, those germs have hitched a ride onto two new hosts. With a rub of the eyes and a gulp, they're through the human front door and ready to get down to the business of making people sick. <laughs> a little later, George comes with the mail. Justin offers him a donut, and with a tickle in his throat, turns his head to cough. <laughs> Justin says bye to George and leaves more germs behind. George starts making his deliveries, and as you can see, there's no return to sender on Justin's leave behind. All it takes is a touch of the germy mail, and then a touch of the mouth, nose, or eyes for a person to become infected. When it's time to call it a day, Ashley brings the infection onto the train. She hasn't washed her hands in hours. The germs covering them make a pit stop on the grab bar before finding a home on some new hands. A few cars over, Justin is coughing again. In these tight quarters, that's bad news. He and his fellow passengers get off the train and head to their homes. The spread continues. But what if Justin's morning had gone more like this? A sneeze into the elbow. And then some hand sanitizer to be safe. A cough into a <coughs> tissue. And a good job throwing it away and washing hands. Co-workers don't touch their eyes, noses, or mouths, no matter what. By following those steps, Justin's germs could have stayed away and slowed the pace of the spread. summarizes everything that we are trying to do right now to slow the spread of COVID-19. So, you know, we just want to encourage you to practice these um, safety uh, mechanisms to uh, avoid getting infected with uh, COVID-19. So um, now, if you happen to get COVID-19, is it, it's important to recognize or um, see any symptoms that um, might um, trigger or might show to you that you have been infected with COVID-19. And uh, some of the more common uh, symptoms are uh, high fever, difficulty breathing, dry cough, or tiredness. And it's important when you um, recognize any of these symptoms, you want to get tested immediately so that you can be even extra cautious in quarantining and um, trying to prevent anyone else from getting infected. Okay, so, and now that we just discussed um, the symptoms that you may recognize to kind of tell you if you've been infected, it's important to note that some people don't always show these symptoms and they, they are termed asymptomatic. And what happens is they don't show these symptoms, they don't have COVID, they feel fine. And, you know, they, they go out, they decide um, to mingle with friends and peers and you know they they spread the co they, they spread uh, um, COVID nineteen that way, so they might not be infected, but their friend might get infected from them, and then they might show symptoms. So it's important to note that there are two types of people: symptomatic and asymptomatic. Symptomatic um, show these symptoms; asymptomatic does not show these symptoms. Yep, got it. Uh, that's just what we discussed. So. Um, Although um, uh, COVID-19 is, a lot of people are infected with it, um, about 80% of people recover from, um, from COVID-19 without needing any special treatment. But it's still very important to um, social distance, use safe um, hand washing techniques, the use of masks, hand sanitizers, and all to slow the spread, especially to protect people with comorbidities. 
and how we, um, we discuss this in great details, how we can make sure that you don't get infected and washing your hands is a big one, wearing masks, um, hand sanitizers, social distancing. Yeah, and if you, if you notice any symptoms, uh, it's important to get tested to, and then of course, follow directions from your health uh, professional. Thank you for that, Akil. Um, so we're just gonna move on to, um, I just wanna highlight one of the, the biggest ways that you can um, prevent the spread of COVID-19 um, and that is to always use a mask. Make sure whenever you're going outside and interacting with people, you're um, wearing a mask and trying to stay six feet away from each other. Um, because as Akil was mentioning, um, it's, um, it's, it's just very important to um, do as much as you can to make sure that um, people, to protect other people in the community that might have comorbidities that um, might be more harshly affected by COVID-19. So what should you do if you feel like you're sick or if you think you're sick? So the first thing you should do is um, get tested, but in the meantime, you should definitely stay home and try to quarantine yourself um, away from other people just to, uh, you know, again, keep the spread down. And if you get tested and it's negative and you still feel like you're sick, it's also a good idea to uh, maybe get retested so that you can just make sure you didn't, um, you weren't in the period between when the test shows that you're positive and after you got infected. So in regards to testing for COVID-19, there are a lot of different, um, different methodologies that can be used to um, make sure uh, to determine if you're positive for COVID-19, if you have the disease. So um, we're just gonna go through a few of those. But first, like, we, like we've been mentioning this whole time, testing is really important. It's one of the mitiga uh, mitigation uh, methods that you can use to help protect you and your family and you know the, everyone in the community. And two main things that it helps us with is it helps us uh, to know whether you and your family should be isolated or if it's okay to be out in the community um, going about your life. And then it also helps um, every, everyone in the public health um, community and in like who manages the public health of the entire population. It helps us keep track of where most of the cases are so that um, we can push resources towards those areas. And then the types of tests for COVID-19. So there are two different types of tests, the diagnostic test and the antibody test. And the diagnostic test is uh, used to show if you have an active infection. So that's, um, that's the type of test where you either put it in your nose or you put it in the back of your throat to pick up the viral particles, and then it's sent to a lab to test if, there, if there's active virus in that, um, in that sample. And then the antibody tests are tests that show if you've had a previous infection with uh, COVID-19. So this means that you had it maybe a few weeks ago, a few months ago, and then your body produced antibodies to the infection. And just a quick note about the difference between antibodies and antigens. So antigens are things that come from the virus. So viral particles, um, viral material, um, and your body reacts to those things by producing antibodies. So antibodies come from your own body. And that's important to uh, keep in mind um, when we're talking about the different tests. Um, and if I didn't mention it before, the antibody tests are the blood tests that you um, might have heard people taking. It's it's different from this the nasal the nasal test or the test that go in the back of your mouth with a swab. And here we have another video. As part of its effort to respond to the COVID nineteen pandemic. FDA plays an important role in helping to support the development of accurate and reliable tests in the U.S. 
There are two main categories of tests in the fight against COVID-19, diagnostic tests and antibody tests. Diagnostic tests can tell you if you currently have an infection. The FDA has authorized many diagnostic tests for COVID-19, including molecular tests. Molecular tests work by looking for the virus's genetic material in a sample from you. The sample is then usually analyzed in a lab. For some tests, the sample can be analyzed at the point of care, such as at a doctor's office. FDA-authorized molecular tests are very accurate, and results are returned anywhere from minutes to several days, depending on the test. Antigen tests are another type of diagnostic tests that see if there are viral proteins in a sample taken from inside your nose with a swab. These tests are often simpler and may provide results quicker than many molecular tests, sometimes within minutes in a doctor's office. Although antigen tests can be less accurate and may need confirmation with an additional diagnostic test, they can be made more widely available because they're easy and simple. The other category of test is an antibody test, sometimes called a serology test. Antibodies are produced by your body when you're infected by a virus, and they help your immune system fight off the infection. An antibody test detects antibodies to the virus using a blood sample. If an antibody test finds antibodies in the blood, it likely means the person has been previously infected with the virus. Antibody tests do not show if you have a current infection, and they should not be used to diagnose a current infection from COVID-19. The results from antibody tests can help us better understand questions about exposure to COVID-19 by helping identify who has been infected and has developed antibodies, if antibodies may provide protection from future infection, who may still be at risk, or who may be eligible to donate a part of their blood called convalescent plasma, which may serve as a possible treatment for those who are seriously ill from COVID-19. If you have questions about COVID-19 diagnostic or antibody tests, talk to your doctor. Testing is crucial to guiding our next steps in the fight against COVID-19. For more information on FDA's efforts to ensure Americans have access to high-quality tests, please visit FDA.gov. We're just going to go over a bit about how long it takes to um, get your test results back. So that really depends on where you get tested and what the type of tests you, you're getting. So the diagnostic tests can take, um, can, they can be back as quickly as the same day, or they might take as long as a week to come back with your results. Um, as we get better with the testing, um, more and more places are um, able to produce the, the results much faster. So uh, just keep that in mind if you're thinking about getting tested. Um, and the antibody tests, they might take as little as three days, um, but some places um, can have it even within one day. So um, those are just some um, things to keep in mind when you're getting tested. So where can you get tested and how much is it? So no test, no cost testing is available, not at your local health department, um, that's a typo, but it's available at your local Walmart, Walgreens, CVS pharmacies. Um, it should be pretty accessible. Um, and another great way to get testing, to get access to testing is to come to your local church um, that's involved with the Keeping the Faith um, initiative and we're offering free testing at various sites um, at various times so reach out to us if you want to know more about that and if you want to um, get tested through us and also if you come get tested through keeping the faith you also get a complimentary goodie bag and so that concludes the um, instructional portion of the of the session Yes, so during the live session, we did move on to a Kahoot. Um, I really do encourage if you're, if you're able to attend the live sessions, it's better, it's more interactive. Throughout this, we would have paused and asked questions to the participants. They were able to tell us or ask us questions. So if you are able to come to the live sessions, we have 
um, about four more that are happening. The information is sent out to the churches and the youth ministries. So come and join us. We had our three winners from the Kahoot from the last session um, and they will receive their prizes. And also we take attendance at each at the end of each session so that we know whether you're going to be bronze, silver or gold, because don't forget, we're going to have a variety of different prize levels based on your attendance and participation. So we hope to see you all at the next session and thank you for joining us.